Welcome to another episode of GeekOutdoors.com. So on this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the cut page. So this is going to be great for people who are brand new to DaVinci Resolve or even for people who are new to video editing in general because the cut page allows you to quickly cut, edit, and put together an entire project without having to go through all the complex and overwhelming things that can come with the full-blown edit page. And so if you are brand new video editing, then this is a really good place to start. And if you are a professional, then the cut page is going to save you tons of time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some clips right here in our media pool. So you can do that a few ways. You could come here and then import media and then choose the folder where your video or image or audio files are. Next up, you can actually import an entire folder. So you say you had everything already grouped in the folder. It's really easy to do. And then here, there's also a syncing option as well with sync clips. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drag some videos in from my folder. And I have some right here. Or if you are already in the folder, you have the folder open, you could simply just highlight the ones you want and just drag it right here. And if it is a different resolution than the project resolution, then it will ask you if you want to change the frame rate to this uh, project setting. So now I have all my clips imported into my media pool. So now let's take a look at all the features that the cut page offers. And so right now we're currently in the default view, which is the media pool view, which shows all our available clips. Then we have our sync bin, which will allow us to sync a variety of clips together. And then here we have transitions, both the video transitions and audio transitions. And over here we have titles, uh, both very simple and basic titles to more complex fusion titles, which are also 3D. And finally here we have effects, uh, both the video effects and also audio effects. So let's go back to the media pool view. And over here we have a variety of views available for everything we see here. So the default is our thumbnail view. And then as we go over here, we get a more visual look at all of our clips by showing us previews of each of the frames within every single video clip. So I really think this is helpful in allowing you to visually see everything without having to bring it down to your timeline or having to scrub through the video. And then finally, we have this more detailed view which shows you things such as the name, resolution, frames, and formats, and other important details. Let's go back into the thumbnail view. You could also do searches here. You could sort your clips. And then over here in the right, we have a preview window. There's three main views that we could have here. The default is source clip. So all of our clips right here, they're considered source clip. And if you put your mouse over it, you could scrub through it and get a preview right here on the window. As you can see here. And if you actually want any of these clips to remain in the preview window, just go ahead and double click and it'll turn red and it stays right there. And then when you click off, it'll go back to the whole uh, quick preview, as you can see there. So I'm going to leave that there. And then to the right, we have our source tape view. This is going to be very powerful, and I'm going to talk about this further in the video. But if you click on it, it shows all your clips at once in this one project timeline. So this allows you to quickly scrub through all your videos uh, at the same time without having to do each one of them individually. And then the final view here is the timeline. So whatever clips that you put down here, here is the clip in the timeline and it shows up right here in our preview window. So now let's go ahead and move over to the section down here on the left. Uh, starting with something called the boring detector. So this is a really funny thing. So if I were to drop a clip right here and then I would press on this boring detector, what it's going to look for are uh, number of seconds uh, in between edits or jump cuts. And all you do is click on analyze. And uh, what DaVinci Resolve would do is it'll look through your entire project to see if there's any places here that it considers boring uh, based upon the time values that you put. And next to that is split clip. So this allows you to do splits, splices, or cuts right there, as you can see there. And then all these other tools right here. I'm going to talk about it a little bit further. Uh, these allow you to put clips into your timeline. And here we have different transitions. We have cut transitions, uh, we have dissolve, and we have a smooth cut. And over here we have something called fast review. 
Uh, this is very powerful, especially when you pair it with source tape. And like I said, I'll go over this uh, in a little bit later in the video. And here we have tools. So some additional options, which I'll go over. And then below here, this allows you to control what's happening here in your preview window. So here you could move uh, left and right by using this. You could also, you know, fast forward, go back, stop, or just repeat whatever is showing. And then here on the left, uh, we have this lock playhead. So you notice right here, there's two main timelines. The one on top is like a really uh, zoomed out view. So it easily allows you to see everything in your project at once. And then below it is a more zoomed in detailed view. So this will allow you to look through each part of your clips, uh, almost frame by frame. Now, what it means by lock playhead is this is the playhead. And what it means lock, the bottom portion, you can really only move uh, left and right. Um, whereas this top playhead, you can move a lot quicker, you know. So if you wanted to unlock that, you would go here to free playhead. And this will work very similar to what it has up here. So uh, I like this one better, but, you know, this works as well if you're going to be using the project right here. If you're going to be using this one to scrub through your entire video. And then here we have video only or audio only. And so down here, this is the snapping tool. So by default it's on. What it means is if you snap, if you have two clips together, you know, kind of like snaps together, you can turn that off if you want to. And here we have markers. So wherever you're at, you could add a marker. So we'll add a marker right there. And what you can do is you could double click on it and name the marker and even change colors as well. So we're going to remove this marker. And here we can actually add additional tracks. So right now there's only one track. You press plus it add another track and so forth. You can remove this by right click and delete. So you can delete the tracks. And then for each track, you could lock the track. So no changes are made. Uh, you could turn off the audio or you could even turn off the video. So that is a general overview of everything that we have here in the cut page. So now let's go ahead and start putting our clips together and see how we could put an entire project together right here in the cut page. For serious YouTubers, check out TubeBuddy, the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. Okay, let's put everything together now that we have a good understanding of how things work in the cut page. So as I mentioned earlier, these parts right here are very important. These allow you to add clips. So I'm going to go through each one of these. So the first one is Smart Insert. So what Smart Insert does is it actually looks at your project to see where there are gaps between clips and it smartly insert a clip right in between. And the reason why it's smart is you don't necessarily have to have your playhead exactly over the point where there is something in the middle. So all you have to do is choose the clip you want to add. Like say I want to add this one, I would select it. Then I would choose Smart Insert. And if you notice, this clip is inserted uh, right in between these two clips right here. So there's the previous clip. Here's the new clip. So that's a really cool thing to have. And next up, we have a pen. So a pen will put the clip at the end of your project. So say I wanted to add this one, and I'll put a pen. And now it goes to the very end of your project right here. So that's a very easy thing to understand. Next up, we have Ripple Overwrite. So what Ripple Overwrite will do is it'll overwrite whatever clips is already here, and it'll put the new clip there. Plus, if there's any spaces you know, on the sides of this, it will ripple delete uh, or basically remove any spaces in between. So I'm going to go ahead and add this one and use the uh, ripple overwrite. And now this new clip is over the previous clip, as you could see here. And any gaps that there would have been there, it already automatically already got rid of those. Now here we have uh, close up. So this is a really cool one. So what it will allow you to do is add a clip, but it'll also zoom in as well. So let's go ahead and choose this one. And I'm going to go ahead and use this up close. So if you go here, you notice that it's zoomed in. So 
What DaVinci Resolve did was it used a dynamic zoom effect, uh, like two times zoom. So if you go here, this is without the zoom. And then you go here, this is with the zoom. So you can have a lot of fun uh, by using this. So we have that one there. Now we have also, this is called place on top. So as the name sounds, it'll place the clip on the next track. So say you were down here and you want to place this one right here. It's place on top. And now the clip is on the top track. And then the final one is source overwrite. Now I don't have any clips to show you how to do this, but it basically has to do with timing. It does all your timing syncs for you. So maybe in another video, I'll show you how this works in detail because there is a lot more to it than just these other ones. Now let's take a look at transitions. And the ones that they have here are ones that are most popular in use, like cut, dissolve, and smooth cut. It's very easy for you to add this. All you need to do is go into the area where you wanted to transition between two clips. Click on it. And now we have our transition. In this case, this is a dissolve transition. However, there are way more than just these three. So we're going to go ahead and remove this one. We're going to go up to the transitions menu. And there are a variety of both video and audio transitions. So if you want to add one, just go ahead and drag it down. Now we have a new transition. In this case, we have a diamond transition. So very easy to use, but at the same time, it could just add a little bit more to your videos. So moving over to the right, we have something that is very powerful and it's called fast review. Now you can use this right now and it'll like speed up through your clips that you have. But where it's most important is what I talked about earlier, and that is in the source tape view. So in this case, it's going to put all your clips together right here. So if you go up here on the source tape view, you can see all your clips at once all put together. And what's great about this fast review in this case is wherever it sees like a very long clip comparatively to the shorter ones, it'll actually speed it up so that you could quickly look through all your clips without having to look through them individually. And I think this is a great tool to use, especially if you're trying to put a whole bunch of things together, but you didn't want to have to manually go through each clip by themselves. So the fast review along with the source tape view can be very powerful, especially if you're working with a whole bunch of clips. So next to fast review, we have tools. Now, whenever you click on this, there's going to be more options available and it starts off with transform. So what transform allows you to do is to quickly resize your clip, reposition it, or you can even rotate as well. And if you need to reset anything, just go ahead here to reset all. I need to reset everything but you could also adjust dimensions down here as well so you could do left right zoom up and down so there's a lot of options here available so moving over we have the crop tool so you could crop left right up down and you can also do this by numbers here as well you could adjust it however you want reset this here we have audio you could adjust the volume and here you could speed up or slow down your clips however you want. So very easy to do there. And on this one, you have a variety of options for stabilization right there and also for the lens correction. So I don't use these, but they are available here if you need it. Then here we have dynamic zoom. I really like using this. And so dynamic zoom is basically what this close up uh, tool had right here. So dynamic zoom works by starting at the green point. So this is where it starts and this is where it's going to end. So if you were to play this, it would zoom in and then it would slowly gradually uh, zoom out. There's also some presets as well. So here's the zoom preset. Here's another one where it's pan. So to pan uh, left to right with this one. So and then there's also angle presets. So you could adjust this how you want. And you can also smooth out the zooms as well by using these various tools, ease in, ease out, and so forth. So I really like having this feature. Then we have composite. So if you're going to do any type of compositing, uh, you could do all of that here. So I really don't use this much at all. So I'm not really familiar on how to use it, but it's here for you to use. So those are all the options that are available under tools. Now let's take a look at some additional things that the cut tool offers. So if you choose any one of your source clips and you double click it, you'll notice that the video's on top, 
but there's also the volume below at the bottom and what you could do here is you could choose what part of clips you want to add to your videos and so you do that by choosing in and out points you could do that by either dragging things in so that's the in point there's the out point or you can use shortcut keys I for in and then O for out or you could also do this as well you could choose these two brackets on the side when you choose that it will actually zoom in and it shows frame by frame shows a side by side view so it makes it super easy for you to be really exact on what part of clips you want to add when you're done you just click on here it is zoomed back out to that single view so once you've done all your edits and you're completely satisfied with everything you have here you could either export everything through the cut page by using quick export and it'll take all the settings from your project settings or you could directly upload to YouTube or Vimeo but if you're not really satisfied with the export options here, you can go to the deliver page and fine tune your export file. Or if you actually wanted to do more heavy duty editing, then you could easily go to the complete edit page. But as you can see here, the cut page is very easy to use, but at the same time, it's really powerful and it will save you a ton of time, whether you're just getting this ready for the edit tool or you're just doing a quick project, then this is a great tool for that. So if you actually have any thoughts on the cut page or anything else here in DaVinci Resolve, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you want to see more of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description as well. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey geeks, if you are a creative geek like me and you wanted to learn how to create content on YouTube and other places on the internet, then check out my Go Content Creators Group where you'll get access to additional videos and content for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part of it is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check out my page, and sign up for my Go Content Creators Group. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.